In this image, we see lighting used in New Year celebrations of 1758 St. Petersburg. A patent for the first light bulb was made in 1880. Electricity came to public use at the end of the 1800s, brought to us by the Rockefeller-sponsored Thomas Edison. So, what type of lighting is used here? Could it be gas? The timeline of lighting technology on Wikipedia says gas lighting was invented in 1792, coming to public use in the 1800s. Are the academics gaslighting about 1700s illuminations being oil lamps and candles? I've spent hours looking for documentation on the technology used and found no reference. The illuminations marked important celebrations. Surely someone would have mentioned how they were lit. Here's why I don't believe they are candles or oil lamps. Even just one oil lamp is a fire hazard, not to mention hundreds. They don't look like oil lamps. Oil lamps were too dim to illuminate an entire town square. The leaf-like formations look like energy capacitors of an unknown kind. There's a good article titled Mysterious Illuminations of the 18th to 19th Centuries on the website tartaria.info. Its author believes the ancients used wireless technology. I quote. Pay attention to the metal thing encircled in red. It's a decorative metal logo of France, similar one for Russia should stand nearby, which used to glow, being charged by the devices encircled in blue. What at first sounds like a far-fetched idea, is actually supported by this part of the previous image. Quote. In order to get any information on these devices, I had to process many publications of the 19th century that were left untouched by censorship, like newspapers, booklets of expositions, and other similar stuff. Information was very scarce, however, I managed to find a small bit of information in French in one of the publications. Out of this text, I found out that ether capacitors from the images were some kind of balls made of tin, with a special filling. If they had a steel sharp element attached to the top, in the form of a flower, they began to conduct electricity, and glow with bright light. So, we are looking at a lighting technology unknown to us, suppressed by the people who prefer to charge money for energy. If free energy from the air sounds fantastical to you, remember that we also used to get water for free, from the air. This article introduces an innovative concept called the air well, designed to extract water from the air to irrigate dry farmland. The beehive-shaped structure works on the principle of condensation. Warm air enters the structure and cools down at night, causing moisture in the air to condense into water droplets. These droplets are then collected in a reservoir at the bottom of the air well, providing a water source for irrigation. The air well was successfully tested in trans en provence southern France, and it has the potential to transform barren land into fertile fields. This invention could be a game-changer for regions struggling with water scarcity, especially in North Africa, by turning dry air into a valuable resource for agriculture. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end, to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. Looking from the lens of suppressed technology, all paintings pre-1800s deserve a new examination. These are some from the article one quoted earlier. Some of the author's commentary on each image. We see some balls hanging on the building. The fact becomes irrefutable. There are also some conifer-looking objects seen in the image. 1681. The lamps, hanging on the wires, evidently have not candles inside. The light they radiate is unusual, and looks like the whole lamp is glowing, instead of separate lights. The whole obelisk is decorated with lights. Where does it take such a high ionization voltage? Here we see Frankfurt in 1730, but for some reason there is the emblem of the Russian Empire. We can see the same glowing balls and decorations in the image. Even the flying balloon radiates light, illuminating some kind of decoration. N stands for the Emperor Napoleon. The light is evidently not a result of combustion. 
the author of the article goes on to say. Is there any detail that connects together all these images, excluding the festive atmosphere? Of course there is. It is again the very same ether capacitor, seen many times in previous articles. The leaf-like shapes were required to generate light, according to the text. This very much supports my older video about ancient towers as antennas. This gem is my final quote from the article. Still have doubts. Here is another artifact. It is an illumination preparation blueprint that somehow managed to bypass censorship. Look at the amount of ether capacitors, big and small, hanging on some net and standing on ledges. These are not oil lamps or any other similar lamps because fire would blacken or damage the siding of the building. These are the very same devices that we saw in all previous images. Somehow, they concentrate the ethereal field in a way that all external metallic bondings glow with light, as well as various lamps, conifers, menorahs, and other decorative elements that appear within this field. This drawing is a rare find. It shows what the inscription says are lighting tools. This is from 1761, and these methods of lighting are mysterious to us. These are lighting tools, in their unlit native state. I get the sense that modern pinwheels used at holiday celebrations are mere degraded replicas of the lit-up originals. This drawing shows festivities in 1749 France, including fireworks and again, the mysterious lights. This image says it's a structure erected around the Green Park for the Royal Fireworks of 1749. I'm skeptical. The text looks pasted to the painting. The structure does not look like it's built for a one-time purpose, only to be burned down by fireworks. The following is allegedly the 1638 celebration of the birth of Louis XIV, King of France. We see an indoor setting. If these were actual fireworks, they would have burned the building and charred the people along with it. Maybe the inscriptions about fireworks were later additions to the images to obscure that they show an unknown technology. Some researchers say that this lighting was also used into the 1800s, using a metal frame of buildings. This image shows daytime versus nighttime. No additional lighting added. These are two Chinese examples. For those curious, here is a web page detailing evidence of ancient electricity, ranging thousands of years back, chronology of ancient electricity. But, I don't think we're dealing with conventional electricity here, but rather, wireless energy, possibly free. This video is just an introduction to something I find really fascinating. If you find it interesting, I'll continue in part 2.